So with a name like Creed, what do you think we're going? Uh, does it, what does it sound like? Is it Italian? Just reminds me of the movie. The Creed movie. Creed movie? America. Okay. But so America, we're going to America? The Creed, I don't know. Creed, it's... The, 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 I'm thinking Spanish. Spanish. Creed. Spanish. Creed. 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 Yeah. No. See, I have, no, I have no clue, to be honest. We'll find out. So, funny, why Spanish? Of all the places, um, doesn't even sound. Spanish is. How would you say that in Spanish? Hola, qué tal? Cómo está Creed? Creed. Creedo. 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 Creed. Ah. Uh, Does it sound French? Creed. Well, now you think. Now you. Met, no, it's think French. about. It. Is it French? No, no, no. I'm asking you. Is it French? Creed, or is it English? Is Creed saying? Let me tell you. See, in Spanish, French, all right, or English. I'll, I'll, make, I'll make it easier. Make it easier. Uh, the founder, 1760. Yep. All right, 1760. 1760. All right. His name was James Henry Creed. What does he sound like? All right. So he's obviously English, yeah. <laughs> so I just made it for myself. No, no, you didn't. Because they think there's a war. Yeah. A war of, 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 of uh, it's not actually a real war. Um, there's a, a, a war of thoughts that Creed is Well, that, that was just like Inception right there. Right. <laughs> You got me so confused just then. It was a war of thoughts. Some people think that Creed is actually French. Ah, uh, okay. But they are actually English. Or Spanish? No, no Spanish. I don't oh, know. Okay, where. Okay. Forget the Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> we will do Spain, yeah, I promise. Yeah, yeah. We will. I've got a really good Spanish one, uh, a Spanish uh, one, but not today. Um, so, in actual fact, the founders were English. James yeah. Henry Creed, 1760, founded the company. Okay, yeah. All right? They were tailors originally. So they would, they made, well, tailors, they were yeah, yeah, they made so outfits and blah, blah, yeah. blah. Uh, and then they did this as an extra and they got... So it was just like a hobby side. Yeah, well, yeah, well, it's just that, I guess, uh, dressing well goes easily with, with smelling Smelling good, well. yeah. Right, right, right. But look, back in the 1760, fragrance really hadn't hit its, its peak. Yeah, it, okay. it was like, it wasn't really a, a nice thing to have. Then, why is it French? In 1854... I think by invitation by the French royal family, I think there's something in there, I can't quite remember. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were invited to go to, to Paris and then they moved their residence. They moved to Paris? Correct. So they left England and they became... So was this during the time when they had these perfumes? 1854. Actually, what you're saying is on point. And that is that around that, that, around that period, so that at the turn of the century, France was trying to extend its dominance as the leading sort of uh, uh, country as fashion, um, perfume was, was one of those. So anything to do with style and class. Yeah. And so what happened is that Creed was a fragrance that was only for the rich. Yeah, okay. For kings well, and royalty, nobles, yada, yada. Um, and so the Frenchies wanted to establish themselves as a powerhouse. They recognized Creed made awesome fragrances. And so they invited them to come to Paris. They were so welcomed in Paris that they moved. They were no longer That's cool story, based though. in England. They moved across to Paris. But the thing is, but they're English, you know. Are they still doing like tailing stuff? Were they still tailing? No, they dropped all that. All right, so crazy. they just focus on this. Now, another interesting part to this, mm -hmm. this was not available to the general public. This is very exclusive. So Creed was ultra exclusive. And, and they would make fragrances specifically for a person. So and that's that their really powerful, strong. Scent. Right. Well, that became their scent. That was their fragrance. Oh, okay, that's cool. So How that, cool is that? Yeah, so you got to have your own scent. No one else could have No, it. and it wasn't open to the public. That's like the ultimate saying of like, you know. Gangster, right? Yeah, but it's like, you know, the ultimate saying of like, you know, I want a scent just for me. Mm. So everyone depicts me. Mm -hmm. That's like the ultimate version. You literally have a scent that no one else Correct. Could have. And so they would make something that was only for you. Yeah. End of story. All right. Makes so I'm going to show you what this one's about because uh, that was designed for a person. Okay. Do you know which person? Yeah, of course. This is what I'm here ah, for. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> this is what I'm here to do. All right, so it was in 1970. Actually, the last part of this before I go and start mm -hmm. smelling is it's a father to son business. Yeah. All right, so James Henry Creed started the business and it hasn't left the Creed family. Okay. It's still owned by the Creed so family. family owned. Father to son, father to son, father to son. That's cool. And not only that, they are their own perfumers. 
Yeah. All right. So in some of these bigger houses, uh, you have the big dog who is the owner of the business, but then yeah. he gets perfumers to come in and he'll go, can you make me a scent for this or that or the other? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Creed they are their own. own perfumers. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. And this one here was created from, I'm not mistaken, actually, I'm not even going to say it because I might make it wrong, but I know it's by one of the Creed family members. Okay. And I will talk about that in a second. Yeah. All right, so 1970, Oliver Creed yep. opened this up. So is that the son? Yeah, one of the sons yep. down the line. Opened this up to the general public. And this now became a fragrance that could be purchased, where before it was only kings, nobles, people who were big dogs. Yeah. Okay. So were it still expensive though? Uh, it's, it's very expensive. Yeah, um, these, these are, okay, so this one here is at least $500. All right, so. Yeah. And this one here, I think it's about $400. Well, I'm excited then. <laughs> so these are... These are really, really impressive scents. All right, so let's, let's smell this one first. So this was released in uh, 1985, and it was designed specifically for an actor called Cary Grant. You have no idea who that is, do you? Very famous? Super famous. So Cary Grant was, um, he would be the George Clooney of the 1950s. He did a movie called North by Northwest. Does that ring a bell? Yes, it does. Alfred Hitchcock? Take More boring guys, like Marvel movies. <laughs> so these are old school movies. Mm, smell that. Oh my gosh. I am getting George Clooney vibes. Well, Cary Grant was the George Clooney of his time. He was yeah. like ultra swag dog. Every, they, everyone would be this guy. And they made this, this is his signature fragrance. All right. They released this to the market in 1985, so we can all buy it. We can all participate in the joy. And it's called Green Irish Tweed. Mm. What, are you, what, are, what are the smells that are, you're, that are kicking through for you? I'm not sure. It's, it's like a, it's that masculine kind of like, you know, it's that smell like, so it, it's that, it reminds me of like, you know, like that person you want to be, I guess. Right. So if you smell someone, it's like, it's very hard for me to explain. All right, this one here, I always deem as this is, if you, this is the smell of success. If yeah, you that's what I'm trying to say. The person you want to If you want to define success, it's green Irish tweed. Yeah. You, you wear it and you just feel, you just feel confident. You feel relaxed. Yeah. You feel. Uh, you feel like you're the man. Yeah, you feel like you're the man. Right. So it starts off with a very light lemony. So it's a lemon verbena. So yeah. it's not that citrus lemon. It's more of an earthy green lemon. Okay. Mm. So it's the lemon leaf, essentially. Well, the lemon, it's a verbena. Um, then in the, the heart note, you're looking at iris. No, violet. Violet leaves. Okay, yep. Softens it a little bit. And then finally at the end there, you're getting... Uh, the, they use the thing... They use the sandalwood, so the woods. But they use a thing called ambergris. And I'll, so one thing that Creed does, the reason why it's so expensive, is that they use a, an oil called ambergris. And what it is, it's, um, uh, it comes from sperm whale. Well. And so the sperm whale. Well. Yeah. So this is a bit weird. So what happens is that they eat a lot of squid. Okay. Yeah. So in their digestive system, they create these like. Um, so this is like ex it's like expensive to obtain. Yeah, really expensive, super expensive. Yeah, if you find a ball of ambergris in the ocean, um, it could fetch up to. I mean, if you were lucky enough to find this, yeah. uh, I don't know, thousands of dollars, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars for this ball that yeah. looks like nothing. It just looks like a clump of whatever. But uh, so Creed use a lot of it in their, yeah. in their fragrances. And the, the advantage of ambergris is that it makes your fragrance last longer. And then yeah. it enhances all the other fragrances that are in there, all the other oils that are in there. Mm. So anything from Creed will last you eight hours plus. Two sprays will take you to bed. That's what I like. I like that. I like perfume sets you that. What did you think of that one so far? I liked it a lot. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. That, one, that's probably going to be my top five maybe. This one is called the king of the fragrance. This is their number one bestseller. Okay. Oh, I have high hopes so, in this. Better be, this is Aventus. This better be my number one. Everybody knows when they think of Creed, they think, think of they think of Aventus. All right. So this one here, funny, it doesn't smell much on card, but I'm. What do you think of that? Hmm. Funny. After I'm, I'm still smelling the green Irish. Yeah, this one's a bit more subtle than the, than the green Irish. Just, I smell that citrus smell. Yeah. Right. It starts off very fresh, don't you think? Mm. Do you want to borrow? Mm -hmm. Smells like, I think orange. Am I correct? Man, the green orange is overpowering. I can't smell it. Mm. I need to put that on the skin. I, I think I need to put it on the skin too. You don't mind? We can put on you first. Right, I'll do you. Oh no, you like the hair. Yeah. All right. Sorry. I'll just do the traditional. I can I can smell it now, actually. Actually, no, I'm going to smell it on you. So I'm wearing something else at the moment that I'm experimenting on. It's, just, it's like that citrus sweet smell. 
It's in the fresh smell, the fresh, fresh category, right. but it's like, it's on the sweeter side. So like, you know, okay, where would you wear this? I think that's more the... Oh, well, I'll wear this every day. I'm... Yeah, yeah. Like this one lasts me hours. If I'm paying 500 bucks, I'll wear this every day. Yeah. So what this one has, it starts off very fruity. So it's apple, apple, black currant. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Apple, black currant, pineapple. Pineapple yeah. is one of the key ingredients in that. Then it moves into more the, the flowers, the lilies, the rose. And finally, it settles in again with that, the, the ambergris, the musk. Um, and it has some vanilla in there too. A little bit of mm. oak moss. When you tell me things and I'm smelling, I can, I like, can pick it up what you're saying. So my son, Farron, mm. this is his signature scent. This is what he wears. Whenever he wants to go out on a date, yeah. feel confident, be, you know, whatever. Um, the other thing about, about Aventus, you get a lot of um, compliments. Okay. So uh, yeah, it, it actually projects, the silage on it is awesome, but it's not overpowering. So two sprays of yeah, this. Yeah, this one's like way more subtle than the, um, the other one we did. So where this one is, I guess the smell of success, in actual fact, you wear this and um, people are drawn to you. It's, a, it's really interesting. I, I, was at, um, I was at a bank and it was, it was a new bank style. So rather than behind the counter, it was next to each other. And, yeah, the, yeah. and the woman, it was a woman that was there and she was doing her thing. And I was just standing about this far away. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, she's talking to me, blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden she goes, she's doing this. Sorry to be so forward, but <laughs> what are you wearing? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, uh, uh, and, and I, I, I was trying to think, cause you know, all the you know, perfumes, I'm thinking, which one, which one am I yeah, wearing today? Yeah. Um, and I said, uh, she goes, it smells so good. She goes, I know this sounds, this is probably inappropriate for me to say, but you smell so good. Yeah. And, um, and then I'm and like, you, and I'm like, oh, understand. I think it's Aventus. And I she goes, oh, I've never heard of it. Anyway, she goes, what do you do for a living? So I thought to explain, you know, we do productions and blah, blah, blah. She was, she, she was enthralled. Yeah. She was, so anyway, so this is a fragrance that you will get a lot of compliments for. So well, this, that's hundred percent on my wish list then. <laughs> this one here projects beautifully yeah it's not overpowering it's not one of those smells that uh sometimes has a really uh, like look the truth is this one here it commands there's a I dominance feel like it, yeah it can be a little bit intimidating it's a there's a dominance to it there's there's something strong about this whereas this one here it, but yeah. i still like that one though yeah 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 oh, look, no matter what. for me these are my two favorites yeah. I, I you know creed and they've got an awesome collection of, of fragrances uh, but these two for me these two are, are the must-haves see these are like the niche top dogs the niche top dogs Anyway, I know you already put on Creed. Uh, sorry, you put on Aventus. Do you want to try Green Irish on the other arm and see how it wears on you? Right, sure. So is it a twist or a pull? No, I do. There you go. Yeah, one spray. Whoa. Isn't that sweet? That's so strong though. Yeah, it's awesome. But I love it. It's a very nice smell. This one's like... I like the smell too. It's very like subtle, but it's like it almost mixes with your skin, you know. It's like you know the truth is, I'm, yeah, it's go. it's very strong. Yeah, yeah, it's very strong. It's like I'm smelling it here, but I'm still smelling this. It gives confidence. Yeah, if you these want confidence, fragrances, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. They, they give. It. If you want those compliments or that confidence, these two got you covered. And again, yeah. because of the ambergris, they will last and last eight hours yeah. comfortably. Don't overspray because you'll kill yourself. Um, but they're, they're really amazing scent. Because they're oil based, don't be deceived by putting them on a card. The smell on the card isn't necessarily what translates on your skin. So yeah, it's good to smell on the card to see whether you like it or not, whether it's in your, your yeah. range. And can you buy these anywhere? Yeah, okay, so these are, these are, uh, so these are still niche, but they are found everywhere. So any big department stores, big um, perfume outlets, they will have these fragrances comfortably. So Creed has become very, very accessible. Still expensive, but very accessible. It's cool. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Peace. Peace.